Atlanta Live, and I'm your host, Nancy J. Lewis. Welcome to an incredible show this evening. You're going to be blessed because we have amazing dancers. We have amazing guests who are going to share their testimonies, what God is doing in their life. This is the time. This is the season that God wants us to walk in faith because we are fearfully and wonderfully made. God loves us so much. So we're glad that you're tuning in. It wasn't by accident that you're watching tonight. There's a word for you. Tell a friend, tell a neighbor. They need to be tuning in because you will be blessed this evening as you hear the stories of how people started a business in the pandemic. Yes, in the pandemic. How about that? That's faith. And so it's important for you to realize where is your faith? This is a time, this is a season now where you have to activate your faith. You cannot be operating in fear. You have to activate your faith because without faith, it is impossible to please God. So you want to please God, right? We all want to please God. So it is important for you to have your faith, get your faith activated because God wants to do a new thing in your life. So this evening, as we hear about people that are doing great things, how they're witnessing the people, winning souls into the kingdom. Because how do we win souls to the kingdom? We share our stories, we share our testimonies, what God is doing. So this evening, don't change the dial. Don't leave the set. Don't leave your room because you're going to be blessed this evening because as we get ready to have our first dance, His Feet will be doing holy. His Feet Ministries.
angelic. That was amazing. Thank you, His Feet Ministries. Whoo, glory. Amen. And now we're on the set with our first guest, Aja Lee. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me today. And so we have some great dialogue, and I really want to hear more about your story about how you started your business in a pandemic. But tell people, first of all, who you are. Well, my name is Aja Lee. I'm 24 years old. I am an entrepreneur, and I started Aja's Traveling Co. in 2020 during the pandemic. So I just have to ask you, during a pandemic, when COVID hit, what was the impetus for you starting a business in the height of a pandemic? <laughs> I, we was going through a hard time. COVID came, and we were very unsure of what was going to happen next. People were trying to figure out how they was going to make a next dollar, how, where they were going to live, what they were going to do because their jobs were shut down. And I just took a risk on myself and found the next gig. I seen a $69 ad where someone was advertising to become a travel agent for $69. And I was like, hmm, OK. Well, if I do it and I win, it was $69. But if I do it and I lost, it was just $69 as well. <laughs> so I took that risk, and it was very successful. So travel during a pandemic, so how has that been? Because first of all, you know, you said you've done some other things as well, some other businesses as well before the travel business. Correct. And so during the, the fact that you decided to travel, what was, I mean, I know people had to be saying, are you losing your mind? Yeah. <laughs> so how did you address, how did you deal with people who were saying, you want to do what? Well, I didn't let anyone else's fears project onto me and my um, dreams and motivations and things of that nature. So I just did it. You know, the worst thing that could ever happen was for it not to be as successful as I thought, but at least I tried. I, um, a lot of people, when I started the company, I couldn't get, I wasn't worried about getting customers because I was like, hmm, okay, the deals are really good. You can book now and go later. So that was, I pretty much calculated on all different angles to ensure the um, success of the business. So you said you, were, you did not allow other people to dictate your dreams. Correct. So, you know, that's something, being so young, and many times people are highly influenced by their peers, what their peers think. How did you, how, how did you develop that kind of strength, that intestinal fortitude? Where did that come from, your family? It did. Actually, my family put the fears on me. In a good way, though, and I like it. My grandma wanted me to pretty much settle in one career, and I was like, well, I'm only... 18, 19, 20, this is my time to explore and see what I actually like. I can job, job hop from job to job to get experience from this job, that job, and bring it all together and make one great business. So what's been the most rewarding for you in terms of starting this travel business? Oh, first of all, what were some of the initial obstacles you had to overcome? Because I know starting a business, being an entrepreneur myself, I know starting a business, there are obstacles you have to overcome. Fear. <laughs> That's the number one fear. Just do it. Don't think about what you don't know. It's all, um, it's all a learning process. What you don't know in the beginning, you will learn, and then you'll be able to do it again and show others exactly what you did. So fear is something definitely that I had to overcome. Okay. And fear had to be replaced with faith. Correct. Yes. When you um, speak of faith, you know, I think of three core values of um, faith, and it's trust, trust that you will do it, Believe, believe that you can, and stay committed in that um, whatever you believe in. Okay, because faith is believing in the absence of what you see. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that fear will paralyze us and keep us from doing things because pe people say you, it's not been done, you know, I can't do it, but we know with God all things are possible. Correct. So it's being from a standpoint of, so you overcame the obstacles. So what's been your greatest learnings or the greatest things you've enjoyed about what you do? Because I still have to say, starting a travel business in a pandemic, who was flying? Who was, tra I mean, again, you had a large base. You can pay now, fly later, or travel right. later. Mm -hmm. But even that, people didn't know when things were going to change. So how did you, how did you deal with that? Um, I led by example. Um, when the pandemic first started, I booked a trip to Puerto Rico. And I ex um, videographed everything that we did and showed my travelers and my customers and my viewers that you can still have a good time during the pandemic. Just be safe. They have different precautions that avoid you from getting sick and others, other COVID restrictions like um, having the um, six feet um, mm -hmm. gap in between or reservations. It can only be so many people within um, a building at a time. So I show my travelers that you can still have fun while traveling and you can do it on the budget as well. Everything is cheaper now. Well, that much I would agree. So you went to Mexico in the height of the pandemic. Puerto, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Puerto, Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. How long were you there? Um, I stayed four days. And so you came back, then you showed these videos to your potential clients. Correct. And say, look, this is where I was, and you can go here too, right? Right, and one of the activities we did was snorkeling. It was the best, one of the best experiences I ever had. And now all of my clients want to go snorkeling in Puerto Rico. 
Wow. Yeah. So your business obviously has grown because you're still doing it. Mm -hmm. Correct. So you have, so how do you get your clients for the most part? Marketing. I think we talked about that. Okay, marketing. Mm -hmm. How, and what facet of marketing? Um, I use the social media. I use social media to my advantage. Social media has changed and it is very, a very great tool. It's free. And um, I like to show my clients what I've done. And if I show them what I'm done and what the others are doing, they'll want to do those same exact things. They want to believe it's possible first. So on, I know you mentioned you use Facebook heavily. It's, that's one of your key places where you get your clients. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about how do you get your clients on Facebook? Because I know somebody's watching tonight and say, okay, tell me, I want to know the secret. <laughs> so tell me about the secret to getting clients on Facebook that you've been able to determine and to find. Clients like to see a deal. They like to see unbelievable deals that no one else can do. So I know that, um, I know the booking tricks and tips. Like if you book on Tuesday night, prices are a lot uh, more affordable than on Monday morning. So I use those things that I know, uh, marketing, the things that I studied while becoming a travel agent, the vendor relationships, and I put those packages together with the full itinerary. So that's your flights, your stay, your accommodations, your activities. So a whole itinerary I put, th put on there and I book it for um, an affordable price and I show them, hey, you can go to Vegas for less than $500, and they're like, really? Tell me how, show me, and then I do that. So this is, this is your prices, I guess, are competitive with the airlines. Yep, they beat about 70 to 80% of the market. Really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. So you obviously, you, you start you start lighting up, it's like you really, you're really liking this. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I love what I do. It's, it's incredible. It's pretty easy as well. So what have been some of the favorite spots you've visited? I will say Puerto Rico. Okay, where else have you been in terms of, since you get a chance to travel everywhere now? Well, actually, um, as a kid, I didn't really get to travel as much because mm -hmm. I was always under the impression that you had to be rich to travel. So that's why I love exactly what I do now because I'm showing my viewers and customers different. You don't have to have a lot of money traveling. So now that I'm older, I didn't study all these things about the travel industry, I get to actually travel more. So now I'm booking trips for like Jamaica and Cancun for myself and trying to experience it and show my travelers, my daughter, my fiance everything that we can do these trips on a budget and yeah <laughs> wow so you talked about your dream and I think it's important being so young that you are going after your dream so what would you tell people who are some maybe sitting back and waiting so we know I'm waiting for the proper time I'm gonna I'm gonna put it off because what people have a tendency to do is procrastinate True. They put off, you know, one day I'm going to do this, one day I'm going to do X, Y, Z, and then five years passes because I tell people the good thing that will happen, five years will pass whether you do anything or not. Right. And you can be in the same spot that you are five years now, in the same spot five years later if you do nothing. Right. So what was, I mean, the impetus in terms of people who need to be encouraged, what were some tools, some things that you had to basically apply and talk to yourself about to get over those hurdles that you can encourage someone tonight who's watching who maybe is parked on the fence, maybe someone who's apprehensive, someone who's in fear, who says, I, you don't understand my story. It worked for you, but it wouldn't work for me. What would you say to them? Literally, take a risk on yourself. That is the major key. Don't, um, don't procrastinate, don't hold it off because whether you do it now and it take you five years, five years from now, it'll still have been five years. So just do it, do it now, gather up the resources. Resources are very accessible. You can use Google, mentors, business partners, friends. The power of networking is very essential and it can take you really far. So they say, yeah, that's nice. It's like, you know, that you, all these things you said there, but you still, sometimes just getting and taking that first step. Because sometimes, you know, people have a desire, they want to do something, but sometimes the fear paralyzes them, mm -hmm. or sometimes they don't have that support. It seems like you have a support system in place that kind of maybe like pushed you a little bit to help you. Yes, and that would be God. Amen. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the, if people got God, they could do whatever they want to, but some people, we talk about we have God, we talk about we have faith until mm -hmm. we really get into a trial. Because faith isn't faith until it's tested. Correct. We can talk about faith all day long about, you know, I have faith when you got $500 in your account and you only got $50 worth of bills, it doesn't require faith. Correct. If you got $5,000 worth of bills, $500 in your account, it requires faith. Yep. So how do you, if someone else, how are you en enhancing your faith? What's helping you? Do you read your Bible regularly? Do, what are some things that you do that are helping you to grow stronger in your faith walk? I use, um, when I think of faith, like I said, it was those three core values and manifestation as well. I write down what I want to do. I pray on it and then I work toward it. Because if you pray and you don't work towards it, what are your chances? So I just make sure I pray, do the work, and set higher goals. Because if my goals are super high and I hit the minimum, at least I made it somewhere. The harder you work, the more you get. So it's like you said, if the goal is real high. I said, if your goals are goals you can do on your own, God's not in it. You want goals that if God doesn't show up, 
they don't happen. You want to have those big audacious goals. Right. That you want, Lord, if you don't show up, this will not happen. Those are the kind of goals we want because if you can have it figured out, and some people are wet, they have it, everything figured out. They have all the steps in place. I said, where's faith in that? If you got it all figured out, that you can do it on your own. God's not in that. Right. So it's important for us to, to have those stretch goals, the manifestation. So do you mentor uh, other people? I mean, do you, you know, in terms of uh, your business, are you mentoring other young people to encourage them to, to kind of like walk in what you're walking in? It's like, you know, because you have this tenacity, you have this ability to really believe in what you want to do and you're going for it. So how are you helping other people in your generation? Well, I do. Um, a lot of people hit me up um, via Facebook and they always say, hey, I want to be a travel agent. Can you guide me? Can you do this and can you do that? Absolutely. I love to do it. Um, I also try to teach my fiance and my friends. We're in this group and every day, we, every Sunday, we say, what are your goals for the week? You know, we all give our goals out. And then in the middle of the week, we follow up with someone in the group. We pick on somebody like, hey, Angeline, what are your goals? Did you hit, um, did you work out three times a week like you said you was going to do? And if not, I send them a, um, a powerful text message that would kind of motivate them. And one of my favorite ones is that your um, dedication is a reflection of your paycheck. And when people think of it, they're like, okay. And then they try to get those again. things done. Say that again. <laughs> your dedication is a daily reflection of your paycheck. Mm. So what are you dedicated to? What are you willing to do? Sometimes I ask people the question, as a coach, what are you willing to do to have the life you want? Some people want success, but I tell people the only place success comes before work is in the dictionary. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you got to work it out. You got to walk it out. You got to have the faith. You got to have the works because faith without works is dead. Right. So it's important. So you all have what I would classify. We call those mastermind groups sometimes where you get together and you share. You hold each other accountable. Yep. And that's why sometimes when you share people with what you want to do, they can, you can check in the middle. Did you exercise three days this week? You say, I don't know. I did, I did two days. It's like, right. So you get a chance to hold them accountable, and we need that accountability. Yep. So how's that been? I mean, is that that's something? How long have you been doing that? Actually, we've only been doing it for two weeks, but it's really, really great. Some of the, they leave reviews and comment and call me all the time, like, this group is so good. This is so good. It's so powerful. I actually had two women leave the group because it was so powerful, and I'm just <laughs> like, no, join it back. Like, this is what we need. We need the motivation. We want you to be motivated. Don't feel bad because you're not hitting your goals. Be more motivated to hit your goals. Stay in it. This is what we're here for. Yeah, because sometimes when people, as you said, they got out, but sometimes I tell people when, you, as, when I work with people and they're working towards their goals and things they want to achieve, sometimes I say, if you don't achieve it, if, if we have a coaching session and two weeks again, we're having another coaching session and they say, well, I didn't get this accomplished. My question for you is what got in the way? Right. Yeah. Was it something that was it life because life happens? Was it because you just didn't do what you needed to do? So it's looking in the mirror, really looking at yourself to say, okay, do, did I do what I was supposed to do because I wanted to, or do, am I making excuses? Because people are good at making excuses. Yeah. But we have to be get to where we want to make results. If you want to do something different, if you want to see something different, you got to do something different. That means sometimes you have to even evaluate the people that are in your network. Because yeah. you've heard it said your network determines your net worth. Mm -hmm. I like that one. <laughs> so people that you associate with, people sometimes who have a poverty mindset, Sometimes you love them, but if you have an ego mindset, that's not necessarily where you want to hang out. So it's important for you, you have this mastermind group, so you all do it every Sunday. So how many people are in the group? Um, we have 10, and we have a lot of people trying to join, but I want to keep it small so we can get it, the structure of it right first, and then we'll recruit more. So these people that are in the travel business, or are these just colleagues? My peers, my friends, family, um, business partners. And was this your brainchild? Yep. <laughs> So you lead this? I do. Mm, look yeah. at you. Go, go, Jesus. He's the, and the children will teach them. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So again, you have people that I'm sure that are more mature than you that are in the group. Mm -hmm. I'm the youngest. Wow. So, so tell me how they can reach you, because I know someone's watching and saying, yeah, I see her. But I like to talk to her. So tell people how they can reach you. You can reach us on Facebook at I Just Travel. That's I S S I A S Traveling Co. C O. And the same as Instagram as well. Okay. So do you post regularly? Do you post things like daily in terms of daily specials? Or yep. Weekly that's specials? exactly what we call it daily specials. We really? post them every day. Mm -hmm. Every day there's a special. Yep. Absolutely. Wow. That's a part of marketing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you, I mean, it certainly is. I mean, but to do it every day, I mean, that's consistency. And I think what has to happen sometimes as a business owner, people are looking for consistency. Do you show up consistently? Are you like, you know, hit or miss? But if you're doing it every day, people are seeing it. So mm -hmm. sometimes they say it takes about seven times for people to really begin to look at something when they see it that seventh time. So if they're seeing it every day over, over a period of time, they're like, okay, she's serious. Yep. 
this is important, so I need to check this out. And so are you getting a lot of, do you get a lot of hits on, I know you said Facebook is where you get a lot of clients. What about Instagram? Is that being successful for you? I use Instagram for person, personal, um, for my modeling and things of that nature. Facebook has just been a hit that I really almost don't need any other software. It's just, it's phenomenal. There's like 5.7 million interactions and 52 followers and things of that nature. So Facebook is my main point of contact. You have that many? Yes. And how long you been doing this? A, um, a year, one year. So that's a lot of success in a short period of time. So do you have other people that are doing it in your network that are as successful as you? Yes. <laughs> 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 yes, they are. Um, I had a lady who um, taught me. She mentored me. Her name is Miss Starks. She's really good. She does. She still trains me to this day. She doesn't do it full time, but she's there when I need her, and we motivate each other. I even send her some of my clients, like, hey, I can't take any new clients today. Can you have this one and handle her for me? And she does it. That's a good place. You have too many clients. Who can yeah. say that? <laughs> I have too many clients. I need to send some your way. People are like, yes, if you got too many clients, that's a good model to be. That's a yeah, good place to so. be in where you have too many clients. So take then the next 90 seconds and look in that camera. And tell someone who's watching today who says, you know, it worked for you, I know you did it, but it may, will it work for me? So take the next 90 seconds and just encourage someone who's watching tonight who maybe needs to have to step into that venture that would help them to get some financial freedom. Okay. As mentioned, I previously said to in, take a risk on yourself. Invest in yourself. Do what you want to do. Don't let anyone else project fears onto you. Stay committed in all of your goals. Get you a journal. Write everything down that you want to do and get a green highlighter. Green means money to me. And highlight everything that you knock off to stay motivated and you'll get to your goals. And pray and have faith as well. So you have a journal. So I think it is important to, if some people journal, mm -hmm. some people write things down. I tell people it's important sometimes to write things down. We can have it in our head, we can put it on our phone. But for me, sometimes writing it down, and then when I can check it off or highlight through it, it's like, a green marker. <laughs> it's success. I use yellow. <laughs> it's like, I like to see the yellow, that, to, the sparkle, the shine. But whatever color you want to use, it is important because it lets you see your success. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it needs to be something visible that you can see in front of you. Our phones sometimes are, where, they're body parts for people. There's like another arm and leg because people go everywhere with them. They, yeah. they, they don't leave home without their phone. It's like, it's a, literally a body part. It's a leg, it's an arm. Yeah. And so it's important that you are showing people that it can be done. So I applaud you, I mean, for, you know, what you've done in this pandemic, how God has blessed you in your business to be prosperous, to be, to be a trailblazer, to doing some yeah. great things. So, uh, Aja Lee, thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you for having me. You know, because God is, give you some, some applause. Yay. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so I applaud you. Just may God continue to bless you, continue to, continue to have the bonus because you have the bonus. But most importantly, continue the faith to trust God, to know that with God all things are possible and that he wants us all to win, but we gotta be willing to put the work in. So much success to you. Continue to let your light shine and continue to draw people into what you're doing, which is what you're doing. You come up with new things continually to do some things, so God bless you. Now mm -hmm. we're gonna go back to the music set where we're gonna have His Feet Ministries doing My Heart Cries.
angelic. I mean, simply amazing. Woo, I love that. I love that dance. I love the song, too. But great dancing, great dancing. So we're back on the set again now with my next guest, Mary Clarice. Hathaway, welcome to the show. Hey, Nancy, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing wonderful. How about yourself? Doing amazing. I'm glad to be here. Hey, man, we're glad you're here. So we had some great dialogue in the green room earlier talking about some things. So let's yeah. just bring it to the main set now. Let's do it. So here we are. So tell people a little bit about who you are and what you do. Who am I? Yes. Um, well, Mary Clary's Hathaway, you <laughs> nailed it. Um, my amazing husband and I are business owners and entrepreneurs. Um, we've got six amazing kids. And, um, you know, we just, we are so fortunate and blessed to do what we do. Uh, we own some insurance agencies. We own a pretty large network marketing business. And um, our, our life, what we love to do is just pour into people and help other people. Okay. So, and we, we love what we do. So when you love what you do, it's not even work. No, not at all. So tell me, when you love what you do, you never work another day in your life. No, two of the ladies I work with are here. And I mean, they're like my best friends. We have a blast together. Wow, they came so, to support you. Yeah, I've got great friends. Got so great tell friends. us about, you know, your, how you came into that business, how you started, how, how basically that all started. Because I think there's a lot of people that are entrepreneurs, because as an entrepreneur myself, there are lots of people who are starting businesses daily. Right. So on that journey, what drew you to insurance, into network marketing? How did you evolve and wind up there? Well, I'll, I'll give you the, um, the Cliff's Notes okay. version, because it's a long story. Okay. But I went to college, got an undergraduate degree, was pursuing the traditional educational path, got a master's degree, you know, because I thought that would be a great idea. Of course, yes. Um, <laughs> and I, you know, graduated from the University of Alabama and was kind of getting into the corporate world. And I just... You know, I think sometimes when God stirs things in your spirit and things mm -hmm. don't sit right and things mm -hmm. don't settle right, and I just, as I got into the corporate world, it's just like, this is not going to give me what I want out of life. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of dreams and goals and things I wanted to pursue, and I was very, I was 23 years old, you know, so I was young, and mm -hmm. um, kudos to Aisha. She was, I mean, at 24 to do what she has done, it's impressive. Yes. And she should be very proud of herself. She was amazing. But there was just a lot of things I started to realize I wasn't going to get mm -hmm. by pursuing the traditional path. Right. And so I started just looking at different business ventures and different things. I looked at opening up a restaurant, uh, which was going to be uh, very expensive at 23 <laughs> years old, you know, almost a half a million dollars to get mm. into the restaurant franchise right. industry. Right, right. And then um, I started looking into the network marketing business and I read a book that opened my eyes to a lot of the success you can really have. Mm -hmm. You know, business is business, Nancy. It doesn't matter if it's a traditional business, a corporate store, you know, a, a travel business like Aja's, if it's a network marketing business. Success, success is success and business is business. Mm -hmm. And so if you treat it like a business, it will pay you like a business. Mm -hmm. And I started looking at these two ventures, and I looked at the network marketing route, and I looked at the, tradi the traditional business route. They didn't match. And they didn't match. <laughs> no, you know, they didn't. I think a no, lot they of didn't. I think a, a lot of the the fear, the hesitation, the you know what what keeps people out of that is the barrier to entry. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people can't afford it. And a lot, of, well, I, well, I can't do this, or you know, I, I can't afford a $400,000 startup or, yes. you know, I mean, I was going to have to take out loans. I didn't have, I mean, you know, most 23 year olds don't have that kind of just this land. I got 400,000 just laying around. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me I was always it. looking for that tree in my mom's backyard and I never found it, you know? <laughs> and so I just realized the barrier to entry was lower, mm -hmm. but there was no ceiling on what I could do to succeed if I really worked hard and put my mind to it. You said key thing, Working hard. Working your hard. Mind to it. And putting and, your mind and, to and it. And God is direct, and, and being spirit led, if God is telling you to do this, 100%. you have all the things that are working for you. Right. 100%. Because you, you have to do the work. People, no matter what, God may give you a dream, He may give you a vision, He may give you a passion, but right. you've got to be willing to do the work. Faith without works is dead. So you can have all the faith in the world, but if you don't start putting one foot in front of the other and you don't start taking those steps, nothing happens. Nothing happens. And I won't. I won't go into the whole whatever, but one of my favorite quotes is sometimes life makes sense when you look at it backwards. Mm. And the restaurant I was going to start is now it was essentially bought back. All the franchises were bought back by the corporation. Wow. And now they've been bought out by a bigger company. So I would have worked really hard to build something a and business. Then, then it would have been 
basically. And then somebody would have said, I want it back. I want it back and they'll take right. it from you. And I'm like, you know, I was telling somebody earlier today, you can have two paths right in front of you and they can both look amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, Robert Frost wrote that poem for a reason. Yeah. They can both look amazing. They can both look promising. They can both yield, you know, or look like they yield the same rewards. But you just, those little tiny unctions that you follow in your spirit and mm -hmm. say, you know what, I think I'm going to go this way instead of this way. Mm -hmm. It, it's a game, it can be a game changer. Oh, when you say, people say the unction, the Holy Spirit is telling you, okay, go right when you always go left. The key thing is to obey quickly. The problem right. we have sometimes when we have that Holy Spirit is telling you, do this, call this person. You say, well, I'll do it later. Well, was that really, do I need to do that? And right now. once you do that, you've gotten into your mind now. Right. Because the point is, I tell people, if you don't obey quickly, delayed obedience is still disobedience. Right. And so it's right. important to just obey quickly, but we have to trust and obey. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it goes against what we feel, our flesh. Yep. And sometimes the flesh wants what the flesh wants, and there's nothing good in our flesh. Right. And so sometimes we have to just say, okay, you know, I don't care what the flesh wants. Okay, I'm not eating that piece of pie. You know, because sometimes, sometimes, you know, we say we want to lose weight. Right. But then you sit there eating, you know, chocolate cake and pie and all this stuff. So, so excuse me, how's that going right. to help you? So sometimes the flesh wants what the wants, and the flesh is always pulling at you to say, but you can have it. You can have one more piece. Who's going to tell? Right. And so you have to have the discipline. Right. And to be listening. When God says, stop, that's enough. You have to be willing to do that. So you talk, you talk to me about how you met your husband and how, you know, how you basically drew him into the, the word of God. <laughs> that's a funny story. <laughs> well, actually, we were, we were not working together. Okay. We were part of the same business team, mm -hmm. but we really didn't work together. So I kind of knew him, you know, in a, in a mentor role, even though I didn't work directly with him, but I kind of knew him in a mentor role peripherally. Um, for a while, mm -hmm. and then, you know, fate happens. And you met. You know, you, you, get to, you got connected. We met, and the funny thing is, is neither of us were impressed with each other when we first met. <laughs> I mean, we were both kind of like, yeah, really? I mean, yeah, I was like, I mean, it's, he's nice, but, you know, whatever, and, you know, he was like, yeah, I mean, I, you know. She's nice, but, you she's know. nice, but whatever. And so, so how'd you get past that? <laughs> I don't know. There was this one, there was like this one moment. We were at a restaurant. We were with a, a ton of business partners. Mm -hmm. And he just walked up to me and he made some like funny little comment. And I was like, I think he's flirting. <laughs> but I'm not really sure. Like, I, I can't tell. And he was. He was flirting. Mm -hmm. And so then I just, you know, you pay attention to things and, mm -hmm. and the rest is history. But you know, we, we sat down, we jokingly, but not jokingly tell people our first date was, was a meeting. It wasn't this like lovey dovey, mm -hmm. going to a restaurant and all that. You know, you're so amazing. We were at a restaurant and we sat down and he was a very successful business owner. He had children already. I mean, mm -hmm. he had a lot of things, you know, already in place in his life. Right. And then I had things that I really wanted out of my life. And our first meeting was what's your relationship with Christ? You know, <laughs> what, you know, like, let's get the deal breakers out of the yeah, way. Yes. And I think a lot of people don't do that. They fall in love and then they're like, wait a second. I don't like these things about this person. And these are kind of big things. And people and think I can change them. I can change them. Honey, you can change a tire, but you can't change a person. Said, the only person who can change somebody is Jesus. Amen. So people, I tell people, you cannot change another person. Only cannot. Jesus can do that. So if you don't like what you see in the dating, Right. Or there are things that are deal breakers or non-negotiables right. in the dating. You better pray your way through, get some counseling to determine if you need to move forward. Right. So you had this discussion basically identifying what... First date. We had our deal breakers. We put them on the table and we said, let's see if we line up on the deal breakers. <laughs> and if we didn't line up on the deal breakers, this was going to be the first date and the last date. And we would see each other in a business capacity mm -hmm. and that was it. Wow. Obviously, it all worked out. <laughs> you, you had some things that you had in common. You all had some synergy there. Right. And you had some things that you could say, we can work through this. We, we, we right. believe some of the same things. Well, if the foundations are right, yes. then, then it's just, okay, let's see if we really like each other. <laughs> and let's see if we, we can get along, you know. And so, but, I, I, but we needed to make sure the foundations were right first. Yeah, and that foundation, which is, in, is Jesus Christ in terms of having Amen. the foundation of the spirit, that God right. being the, the base. So when stuff happens, when the storms come, because right. they will come. They will come. When the challenges come, they will come. 100%. But you have the base because you're, it's right. built on the rock. Right. 14 years of marriage, and there's, there's different valleys and seasons mm -hmm. we've had to weather. Mm -hmm. um, but the one thing that we have never uh, 
we've never had a significant issue or challenge or disagreement or anything over our faith, how we want to raise our children, mm -hmm. you know, what, what our visions and goals are for our life. Like nothing significant has ever. So, so when the storms of life have hit, mm -hmm. we've had to weather certain things. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell people, I think as a, as a couple, one of our greatest strengths is that we're actually really good at fighting together. When a lot of people go through battles and they fight each other, right. we're actually really good at saying, all right, baby, we're locking arms and we are gonna drawing go swords and we're going in, you know, we're going to win. We're going to win because, because we're going to do this together. Now you talked about also how your husband basically, uh, basically mentored to some people, you know, basically brought some people to know Christ right. in a way without pulling his Bible out, right. without doing something. So talk to us about that because, again, I know you mentioned sometimes that a lot of people, we hear this term a lot from people, mm -hmm. that they have church hurt. Right. That they are mad at the church or right. they're mad at whoever. And the bottom line, I ask people, say, has Jesus hurt you? Right. So talk to us about how your husband was able to minister and bring some people in by his walk. Well, you know, my husband and I grew up very different, mm -hmm. you know, and his background was kind of crazy and very dysfunctional. And, you know, he grew up in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. And so he saw a lot of, a, a lot of um, not real Christianity or, or people that would say they had a certain faith, but they didn't really walk it out, mm -hmm. so to speak. And so he really didn't want anything to do with it. I grew up in the church. Both of my parents were, you know, involved in the church and my father had a prison ministry and he went on missions trips and my, you know, mother was involved in the church and, you know, even, I mean, my parents, you know, oddly enough, divorced when I was young. Um, but my mother ended up, like my stepfather's a retired Methodist pastor. I mean, so faith has always been a part of my yes. life. Yes. My stepmom and my dad and stepmom met in the church, you know. And so we grew up with very different viewpoints on, on faith in, on, in, in, in the church in right and so but what I started to realize is where he had come from if somebody had said to him hey Jeff I'd love to invite you to church on Sunday he mm -hmm. would have been like I'm good no thank you no like thank you but no thank mm -hmm. you because I see what all my friends do and they profess to be people of faith but yet they're going they're not in they're not they don't act any different than I do mm -hmm. so what's the point? And so, and I started to realize that there's a lot of people out there mm -hmm. that you can't, they're, they're turned off by the church or they're turned off because they've been hurt by a pastor or they've, they've seen Christians act very unlovingly or, and it's just a turn off to them. And so what I started to realize in the, in the world of business, you know, I believe God calls us to the things that we're supposed to go do. Mm -hmm. I believe God called me to entrepreneurship because it's a window where I can um, minister, I can mentor people, I can minister to people, and I can develop relationships with people and genuinely show them through my actions, mm -hmm. I want to help you, I want to serve you. You know, our business, we're very serious about teaching people how to, to, how to build and run and own a successful business. Mm -hmm. But we're also very serious about teaching people how to have a successful life. Amen. And there's a lot of people that are turned off for different reasons. Mm -hmm. But if I can earn their trust and I can help them get their finances in order and I can say, let me, let me help you have a great family life. Let me help you make great decisions. Let me help you, you know, kind of navigate these storms in life that are going to come. Mm -hmm. Then that opens up the door for me to be able to witness and share my relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. Because when you read the word, Jesus is not going to hurt you. And that's what you have to encourage people yes. to dig into is a faith and a relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm not what a person is telling you and not what a person has done, you know, inside the four walls of a building. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's been a game changer because I know a lot of people that would have never, they would never know who Jesus was if we weren't in the position that we are in as business owners. Mm -hmm. right. But because we could develop a relationship with them and we earn their trust, then they eventually come and they're like, what is this? What's, there's something different. I want to know what you know. Some of them say there's something different about you. Right. And the Bible says we are peculiar people. Right. This is, you know, but you, you act different. You know, you show love, you do this, you help out. Right. And then you're able to witness and able to share Jesus with them and say, because Jesus loves you. Right. I tell people, because the marketplace sometimes is where we really have to witness because in the marketplace, there are a lot of closet Christians too. Yeah. The people who on Sunday they will profess, you know, they're Christians. And it's not a judgment or anything, but right. God is like, in this era we're now, it's going to take boldness. You have to stand up for your faith. Mm -hmm. What do you believe? 
Yep. It's like, what do, what do you believe? What are you willing to say? Are you willing to stand up for Christ and for righteousness? Or are you willing to go with what the world wants to do? You have to make right. a stand. That's where it's coming to. I've, I have always said that the, the ancient Christians that were persecuted because of their faith, Ooh. I don't want to get to heaven and have them look at me and go, I literally died and was burned at the stake for my faith. And you had a hard time talking about yours. Like, I don't want to have that conversation right. in heaven. Amen. And so I'm like, <laughs> you know, you have to be bold. Yes. You and do. I think sometimes people are afraid to be bold because yeah. they're, they're afraid of human rejection. reaction and rejection. Yep. So tell me how they can reach you. Tell them um, how they can reach you. Y'all you, you want me to give you my phone number? Yes. Uh, Website, email, whatever you want to give them. Tell them how so they can reach I, you. I use Instagram quite a bit. Okay. Um, I am on Facebook. I don't utilize Facebook as much, but I am on Instagram. Um, it's MC, like Mick Hathaway. My best friend Eileen actually coined the nickname Mick Hathaway. Okay. And so I was like, oh, I'll use that for Instagram, but it's M-C-H-A-T-H-A-W-A-Y. Hathaway <laughs> with a one. Because there's another McCathaway, but she lives in Canada, and it's not me. Okay. So take so the next... McCathaway one. So take, look in that camera and take the next 90 seconds and just encourage someone who's watching tonight. Just in, take, take, give them a word of encouragement. Um, whatever dreams and goals and visions and desires that you have in your heart, don't let anybody tell you that they can't come to pass, and don't ever let anybody tell you that you can't accomplish something. Because if you feel a vision... In here, God will open up the doors to make that come to pass. You just have to be willing to take those tiny steps of obedience because those little tiny daily steps of obedience will lead, exactly, will lead you exactly where God wants you to be and into your calling that he wants you to have. Amen, amen. So certainly you have shown as a successful business owner, an entrepreneur, and I tell people, anytime you're an entrepreneur for longer than a day, or I'm just being facetious, but if you're an entrepreneur an for longer than a... <laughs> six months or a year, if you've been out there for like five or six years, you know that there's been some lean times. There's been some valley experiences. Right. And then there are mountaintop experiences, but our faith grows in the valley. Amen. Because that's when you, when you can't figure it out, when you have to tell people, when you get to the end of your comfort zone, that's where your faith begins. Right. So we thank you for joining us today, Mary Clarice Hathaway. I've loved it. Sharing, so your, great to be here. sharing your journey, sharing your story, just encouraging people, because I think it's important for people to realize you chose a different pathway, and it's okay to right. select a different pathway, because right. I started out in corporate, but I realized, right. you know what, uh, this, I think I need to do something different, because it was, you're, you're somewhat restricted, mm -hmm in terms of with sometimes the activities and things you're doing as, all, as well as income. Right. And so I realized I want to do something different. So I stepped out to do something different. And when I was here, early, my mom says, now, have you, now you sure? Because you got this good job. Yeah. Making good money. You got staff. And you want to leave all this? I'm like, yes, I do. It's, it's okay. I'm, 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 I've been approved. God, it's, 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 I can do this. Right. But for them, that was just new to them. So again, I applaud you. May God continue to expand your territory, do great things in your life and your business. Uh, great talking to you this evening. Thank you. I love your energy. So yes, hey. Good and so we're fun. going back to the music set. His Feet Ministries is going to be dancing to spirits.
the darkness into your love, into your light. Grace upon grace, beauty for ashes, you come to us. That was good. His Speak Ministries. And we just want to thank you this evening for joining us. We've had some great guests. We had Aja Lee, who is a young entrepreneur, sharing her journey. We had Mary Clarice Hathaway sharing her journey, her non-traditional, moving from traditional to the entrepreneurial pathway. But the entrepreneurs tonight were rocking it, sharing their stories. So as an entrepreneur, I love what I do. And when you love what you do, you never work another day in your life. God wants you to be a blessing to the body of Christ. He wants you to share your story. Wherever you are, you have an opportunity to witness to people, to share them about how good God is. So we thank you for tuning in this evening. I know you were blessed by the guests. You were definitely blessed by His Feet Ministries as they danced the glory. So we praise God for you. Tune in every weekday. We're here every week e evening sharing different stories, different guests. We want to bless you. You're getting blessed because you are here. So you tuned in because you needed to be here this night. So we thank God for you. God bless you. We'll see you next time.